OpenAI's GPT-5 is a really intelligent way to choose the right language model to serve the user. Before GPT-5, we had a ton of choices, 03, 01, 40, 4.1 nano, like there was so many different model names, which was kind of hard for users. And so GPT-5 makes this very simple. You get GPT-5 or you get GPT-5 thinking. And later, um, they, they recently re-added GPT-4.0. But it, it's fewer choices because LLMs or AI is intelligent enough to do the work of deciding the right model. In this video, we're gonna look at how we can build something like GPT-5 in Langflow. That is a way for an LLM or an AI to choose the right model for the job. Let's dive into it. So if we open up Langflow here, we have a totally blank canvas and we'll we'll start with a chat input and we'll zoom out a little bit because we, we have more things to add. Um, and, and we'll start with an agent and an agent, of course, has agency and decides the right course of action. OK, um, and this agent has one job. It's like you decide um, how to solve the user, how to answer the user, how to answer the user. If you need to think more about their query, you respond with with one word only think. If it's an easy query, you respond with one word only default. Okay, so we, we, we let the LLM and this is the full system prompt here. We we let the LLM judge or we let the agent exercise agency or judge um, how, how do we solve this user's query? Do we think more or do we just answer? Because we have this in our knowledge base, okay? And so this is the basis of our GPT-5-like behavior. Um, we then pass the user's query as input and now we need a couple more agents. We need an agent for the easy case and we need an agent for the um, thinking case. So let's let's do that now. So um, to start with, let's add another agent. So we have a multi-agent system here and this agent answers the user's query. Now we need to take the user's query and include it in a prompt, but also we're missing a key step here, which is decision-making, which is routing. So our LLM judge, if it needs to think more, responds with one word, think. If it knows the answer, it responds with another word, default. Let's use this with some programming primitives called conditionals. So if we come to Langflow, we can do if else, as a, as a router, so to speak. And if the text input from the agent matches or equals um, default, then we use a basic language model that doesn't need to think, something like 4.0 mini. In fact, let's make our judge a bit smarter with 4.0. And so if the input is default, then we say true and we use this agent, okay? So now what we need to do is compose a prompt for our case where we don't need to think. So we'll create, we'll go to a prompt template here and we'll just add this template where we we need two values users query which is we'll add a variable query and the value from the judge um, yeah and so we'll save that and so we'll take the value from the judge in this case true uh, so it's default and we'll take the users query back from, from here and we'll just add it like that, okay? And so now we have a prompt to give our non-thinking agent, our mini agent. So we'll take this prompt and just pop it in right there. Okay, we're, we're halfway done, but now we need to solve for the thinking case. Okay, well, let's, let's do that. So we'll just duplicate this prompt template um, and we'll, we will pass in the user's query exactly as is, but we'll pass this time the false value. And now we need to give this to an agent that can handle um, thinking. And so to do that, we'll go use OpenAI's new uh, language model and we'll pass the prompt as input and the system message we can just copy from here. But we want to use a more sophisticated model. We want to use GPT-5. Uh, but GPT-5 isn't particularly available here in Langflow yet. This, was this will come in an update, but we've documented how to do this right now if you want to in our blog. So when we have any questions about Langflow, uh, the blog is a great resource. So let's go look up the blog. So we go to langflow.org slash blog. Um, and in here, we can just ask, right? How do I use GPT-5 in Langflow? Um, and we'll get an answer to use it. You'll want to follow the guidance in this blog post. Thank you very much. This is the blog post uh, written by my colleague, Phil Nash, uh, really tremendous colleague. And so now that we have this, we can just scroll down and it, it gives you a little snippet uh, where you can edit the OpenAI components. So we'll copy this. And you go to Langflow 
and an open AI component, we go edit the code. Again, all components in Langflow are just code, so you can do whatever you want with them, okay? So we'll come here and we'll paste this in, open AI reasoning model names plus these ones, which I can save. And so now we're gonna use a reasoning model that is available in our list, which is, we can use O3, which is my favorite reasoning model, or we can use GPT-5. Um, I'm happy to use GPT-5 here, okay? Uh, and that's it. And so now we've got this cool control flow where a judge decides think or don't think. Finally, we just need a couple chat outputs to send the responses to. So we'll give this one a chat output right here and we'll give the um, the thinking model also a chat output. And again, I can just use O3 here as my thinking model. The cool thing about Langflow is I can even use a thinking model from Gemini or Claude, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using OpenAI here because we have an API key for that, but you can really like if else and do any model behind the scenes. And it's very easy also, you can just like, um, you can just choose from a big drop down here as you can see. Okay, so now we have this, um, let's test it. And let's test it by going to the playground. So we'll go to the playground and this is some testing here. We'll start a new session and we'll say, explain, um, or we'll just say hi and see what happens. And this doesn't require thinking, obviously, and so it used GPT-40 Mini um, because that was our, our non-thinking model. In fact, if we go back, and if it's default, then we use 40 Mini. Now we need to use GPT-5. Let's, let's come up with something a bit more that, that requires a little bit more thought. Um, and so if we explain the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but for a two-year-old, right? This is, this is obviously like, you need thinking for this, like your knowledge base is probably not gonna be good enough. So um, let's try it. There we go. So it says, imagine a teeny tiny sparkle that's always wiggling. When you shine a little light, you see exactly where it is. The light gives a gentle boop and it jumps. So this is cool and it used GPT-5 here and 4 Mini here because of this great system. In fact, we can just look at it, right? So if we go to chat input and we write like hi in here, we can actually see the different moving parts when we hit play. So we'll, we'll hit play right here in the chat output, and you can actually see it choose. Um, so it goes here, if else, and then it, you see that? It, it went to the right um, output because it did this routing step in between. This is, when you go to chat GPT and choose GPT-5, this is how it decides whether to think or not. Um, and this is how you can build it in Langflow. We can't wait to see what you build in Langflow. As, as always, uh, we're here to support you and maximize your success with Langflow, listen to your feedback, and support your com you as the community. Um, what did you think about this video? Leave a comment below or at us on social media. That's x at Langflow underscore AI, or say hi on Discord. All the links are under the like button below. Um, there's also a blog post about this as well under the like button. So let us know what you think. We're happy to continue the conversation, and we'll see you in the next one.